Oh, this is just an introduction before we blow your mind. The show is all of that, and when we do it all the time, we'll just keep it on the floor in a chair, boss in the air. Just don't go nowhere, because everything we do is all of that. Welcome to the Invincible Podcast, probably the best superhero podcast in the universe. This is a show where friends get to sit around and talk all things Invincible, a comic book by Robert Kirkman, Corey Walker, and Ryan Otley. This is episode 54 of the podcast, and we're going to be continuing our discussion on tie-in series to Invincible with Invincible Universe, Volumes 1 and 2, and joining me, as always, is Bill. Hi, everybody. And TJ. Hello. It's TJ. It's TJ. Hello, fucking TJ. How are you guys doing? Great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we've got some movie talk that we want to talk about. We want to save it for the end of the episode. Well, no, we can talk oh, about because it's what them. it's what we've been doing, right? And I'm sure everyone's really eager to find out what we've been doing in all of our spare time. So Ryan, you... say, so TJ, what have you been up to? So TJ, what have you been up to? So I've actually just recently caught up on all the Marvel movies. That's right, you have. You I saw have. Black Panther? And... I saw Thor Ragnarok and <gasps> Black Panther. Oh, I can't wait to hear what you thought of Thor Ragnarok if you didn't mm. like it as much as I didn't like it. <laughs> so you guys hated it. Didn't it? Hate. Okay. Hate is a strong word. Yeah. We walked out and we were just like, we just didn't care for it that much. And mm-hmm. it was a little <laughs> disappointing. It wasn't, it felt forced and we just weren't big fans of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Um, that, I mean, I don't really, I'm, I'm tough when it comes to the Marvel movies because I feel like they're all very similar. I'm just kind of over it. Um, I will say, you might disagree, actually you will disagree, that it was the best four of the three, but I still, for me, that's not saying much, like, at all. Yeah. Yeah. If they're, if, if, if you're ranking them, Thor 1 and 2 are on the bottom of your list. It really was, like pushing comedy hard like really yeah. just trying and that's to be... with you going and knowing that it was going to yeah. be doing that mm-hmm. yeah i will say it is better the second time bill i did rewatch I have it i've seen it um three times total okay. is, it, is it better knowing no. what you're getting into no you don't think so Mm-mm. i don't mind okay. it as much knowing that it's like just a ridiculous amount of humor yeah like uh, yeah i guess so which is funny but... because i katie and i just rewatched <laughs> the entire MCU and including Guardian, Thor Ragnarok. Yeah, what did she think of that? She liked it. Okay. Yeah, she thought it was fun. Uh, one of her favorites is Guardians One and Two. Mm-hmm. I think those are way funnier than Thor Ragnarok. But in a more but natural it way. Feels, yeah, yeah, it feels, feels more feels natural because there yeah. are like in the same movie you have humor that's funnier than Thor because it's not so obvious. I disagree mm. with that though. Are I actually I don't like the the comedy in, in Guardians, and I'm thinking. There were two parts in Thor Ragnarok that I actually laughed out loud. Oh yeah, dude, we laughed a lot in there the was theater. Something like with him like falling or something like that, and he was like, "Oh yeah, uh, when Doctor Strange." I don't want to say too much of people that didn't see it, but Doctor Strange kidnaps Loki, and then like, yeah, that's oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Goes, and, he, and then when he drops, he was like, "I've been falling for thirty minutes. <laughs> I have been falling for thirty minutes." I thought yeah, that was that funny. was really funny, dude. I like and when then, he said that. When, and when, then when Thor was going through the portal and he started screaming, <laughs> oh, <laughs> and it cuts to yeah. uh, it was the Willy Wonka yeah. And like it, yeah. yeah, dude, yeah. Jeff Goldblum was awesome in it, and the fact that like he had a line in the movie where he just stops halfway through a sentence, and there's just silence, and it, it just continues on. Like he just stops talking randomly i don't remember that oh it's so funny and then uh i liked uh, I, afterwards i remember really laughing at the part where thor's talking about the time how how loki tricked him when they were younger when they were kids once mm. and he oh, turned yeah. into a snake because mm. he knows i like snakes so i picked yeah. it up and then he bit me and then he mm. and then he and they turned back and he's like ah it's me and he stabbed me we were we were seven yeah it was that. really really funny i think i don't know i just it, it felt like it wasn't really sure I felt like it was, trying, it was trying to be a comedy, me. though. Like, there were funny but moments it was in it, t- but... I don't know. I, I would say know. that was a more of a comedy than, like... My main issue with it, and I've said this before, is that every scene or, like, bit of dialogue ends in a joke. Even yeah. if it's not meant yeah. to be. Like, he- he- Hela, Hela, the goddess of death, like... Every scene that she's in is supposed to be kind of serious. I disagree because the and scene, the scene where she shows up, is a very dramatic scene with it, Odin and everything happening. That's and then maybe all of a the sudden, one thing. 
Maybe yeah, the one scene. but it feels like it doesn't fit in the movie. Not to mention the terrible green screen and oh that. Oh my like, god, it's it ugh. was it just felt weird. Like there were scenes that like that were spo- like her breaking the hammer, like mm-hmm. all the all the um all of his friends dying. You know what I mean? Yeah, like. But I'm referring to know. okay, TJ. So when Warriors when three when Bruce Banner was like, "Do you really want to know who I am? Let me show you." And he and he jumps out of the the ship and he, and he's gonna turn into Hulk. I knew I was like, I bet you he's just gonna hit the yeah, ground. Yeah, Katie even said that. Yeah, because you knew how every scene you know was going the, to end you because know it the was humor. it was very formulaic. It was mm-hmm. very formulaic in that the scene would start, it would be semi serious or funny all the way. But if it was semi serious, you knew that it was going to end in a yeah. punchline that negated the the, the, the scene. I would say the before. action was awesome though. I mean the mm. the the. I thought the what? end action was good. Like they I end, loved that like scene. the bridge was good. Yeah, but the bridge everything was else. crazy. I thought the bridge, the bridge was good, especially the dun 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 yeah. dun, 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 dun like like ah that yeah. that all that Immigrant felt song. really good. But that wasn't like normal movie. Mm-hmm. Like the, well, it's the very rest of the, the movie. style of it's great. The color is crazy. Like it's mm-hmm. I don't know. yeah. So Black Panther. Yeah. I thought everything with war, Killmonger, <laughs> Killmonger, <laughs> Killmonger, Killmonger. Killmonger. Was very cool. I liked his story. Everything else I thought was boring. Thank you. Yeah, I thought it was very boring. Did you see? See? Did you think that the CG was like the worst thing you'd ever seen in a movie? Just in that scene. Ever. Just in that one scene the was whole, it bad? No, the whole no. scene, the whole the whole car fight scene with him. Like, no, I didn't think once during the car ugh. the car scene. Watch Civil War again, dude. Watch Black Panther and Civil War, and then watch him again in Black Panther, and it's like, ugh. I was actually really excited for Black Panther though because. When I watched Civil War, I came out of it thinking that Black Panther and Spider-Man were my two favorite favorites, parts, but yeah. they weren't in it that much. Yeah. So I want more. I liked Black Panther. Them. I liked it. It's not in my top like five favorite Marvel movies, but it's far from my top I do ten give it, least favorite. I do give you know? it credit like it's, for, it's good. for being in a Marvel origin story that's not the same old thing. Because that's what I don't like about every Marvel origin movie. It's pretty much the same thing. Yeah. Um, it did have elements of that, like, yeah. you know... But it was, I thought it was very different than most of anything else. Like, mm-hmm. I thought Doctor Strange and Iron Man 1 were the same movie. Same layout, anyway. Well, they are yeah. literally well, the same that, movie. That's kind of the Marvel template, though. Like, Ant-Man. Like, they all yeah. kind of have yeah, that. Ant-Man. But if you think about but it... But that works. Guardians, works. Guardians isn't a, isn't a cliche That doesn't really fit origin. the template, no. 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 That's not a good movie, though. Oh, yes, my God. Is, you're crazy. dude. How can you... Okay. It's so good. I didn't like... Borderline didn't like Guardians when I first saw it in theaters. And then after I watched it, I was like, why didn't I like this? Like, it's a good movie. I've seen it multiple times. I don't like it. Yeah. Mm. I can't wait for Infinity War. I think it's going to be amazing. I am, I'm nervous that my expectations are too high. but I don't think that they can be just... Because with, look at the I last think, the last two movies, like Winter Soldier and Civil War. <sighs> like, these, the Russo I brothers, each, I feel each, confident. Each character is going to be in it, like, three minutes each, You're on your and mind. then it's going to be like a six hour long movie. <laughs> There's yeah. too many you, fucking people. Okay. Here's the thing when we first saw Avengers, or before we saw Avengers, we were thinking the same thing. We're like, how can they put, put all these huge stars and all these huge s- stories? And then Joss, we didn't change one... the fucking game. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's the same exact thing, dude. Like, yeah, there's a lot of fucking characters. I'm not in this, saying that but that's going to make it bad. Everyone's going to have their moment of like. <laughs> You know. Yeah, I have a feeling. I, I think it will. Is there a runtime on it yet? Do you know? It's long. Is it? Okay. I think it's like four and a half hours long. <laughs> I wish. My sources tell me. Yeah. Um. We got to get back into Invincible now. We'll talk more other stuff afterwards because I want to know what you guys thought of A Quiet Place. Oh yeah. So we let's did save. See that. Let's save that though. Uh, the end. We uh, we're kind of continuing, like I said at the top of the episode, our Invincible tie-in. You know discussions the last one we did was guarding the globe and that ended and it became invincible universe it's two volumes 12 issues total and uh yeah can you give us a little history of of invincible universe now was this semi-monthly or was it was it monthly i want to say this one was monthly okay so it had more of a like a secure schedule compared to mm -hmm. i think there was a year um, in between when Guarding the Globe ended and Invincible Universe started, and they changed the name because from what I from what I gathered on reading and in the um, the back of the first issue and everything like that, because they were feeling pressure pressure from Marvel, because the thing that we always at least used to do, Guarding the Galaxy, Guarding the Globe, like mm-hmm. it was too close of a name. Um, so they were getting death threats from Marvel. Yeah, pretty much. Like and I think they their windows. yeah, and I think they also took that as an opportunity to put invincible in the name as well as you know 
give it a reason to be characters other than just the Guardians of the Globe. You know, mm-hmm. so you, there's more Wolfman in this. There's more Invincible. There's there was a fuck ton of more Immortal. Of Wolfman. There was in right. Volume Two. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if you this does pick up pretty much for the most part where Guarding the Globe left off. So go listen to our episode on that first. Read Guarding the Globe first. Uh, right now we're gonna go into a quick spoiler-free segment about Invincible Universe before we break down you know the issues and everything and talk about what we thought of it. Um. So, TJ, what did you think of Invincible Universe? This is your first time reading this one? Uh, I remember reading, like, the first couple before, and then it got away from me. I didn't finish it Yeah. Uh, before. Uh, so, yeah, pretty much it is. Um, if you listen to our Guarding the Globe episode, I talked about how that one, I just thought it was okay. I thought mm-hmm. it was good. Good read, you mm-hmm. know. Um, I actually liked guarding, guarding the Globe more than this. Yeah. Wow, so you didn't like this at all. I wouldn't say I didn't like it. I mean, it's Invincible. It's Invincible Universe. I love these characters. Um, But the story, I just thought, was a little kind of all over the place. A lot of these are like one-shot issues. Yeah. What would you think, Bill? Okay. I thought the villain was kind of, you know, he didn't really like take his place until the very end. And then it was just kind of over. Yeah. But we'll Well, get into that. Yeah, there's... When it comes to the villains, there's there's not like one big overarching villain like there was with Guarding the Globe. It's kind of like... Right. Two or three, Mm -hmm. you know, semi-big villains. So, for me, I like this more than Guarding the Globe. And I think that this had the highest of highs. Like, it had the best stuff that I've ever read. Not, like, in Invincible. I'm saying, like, in these one-shots. And also the worst. Okay. Um, I love how the first volume, it is seriously like, oh, you want to know more about, about... Fucking Best Tiger, here's an entire issue about Best Tiger. Oh, you want to know more about, like, Knockout? You're here's... talking Invincible Universe? Yeah, Invincible Universe. Yes, like the one-shots. I yeah. liked I liked there, that there formula. There are straight-up the issues in both Volume 1 and 2 where it's like, this is that person's yeah. issue. And in that... But at the same time, like, think, recap and guarding the globe. Things like Chupacabra. I know that there's some of that in Invincible Universe, but, like, Chupacabra's, like, whole issue in guarding the globe was awesome. Mm-hmm. Everything with, um... What a, I can't remember her name. Knockout? No, uh, uh, Outrun. 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 Everything yeah. with Outrun. Oh, um, yeah, with her being like, I don't know. I feel like there possessed. wasn't that much character building in Guarding the Globe. But after reading this, I actually, looking back, think that maybe there was more character building in Guarding the Globe than I, I gave it credit for. I think that you're crazy. I think this one was more... I don't know. The Garden of the Globe felt like origin stories, whereas this one felt like, oh, you got to know the character. You know the character. Let's go on an adventure. You know what yeah. I mean? Let's let's get to know. I them felt like the adventure deeper. was last time. This is just like, you know, this person goes off and does their own thing, and then the dog goes off. I and think does that's his because it doesn't have a big overarching arc. Which I, think that's I liked. Why. It was refreshing almost because that felt kind of forced in Guardians. Okay. Gar- like, Guardians hey, here's set. Here's this. There needs to be like, a, oh, every other page is what the villains are doing. Like, this was just like, let's let's mm-hmm. just look at what they're doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? I I think I agree with both of you in the sense that I actually like Guarding the Globe a little bit more than Invincible Universe. But I will say that between the two series, between all four volumes, Invincible Universe did have the highest of the highs. Right. Uh, I think that, and we'll get to it, there's an issue that is probably one of my favorite issues of all things Invincible in Invincible Universe. Is it what I'm thinking? It, it has to be. It's so good. And so, uh, I don't know. Like like you said, highest highs, not so much lows, but it was just kind of like you were saying, TJ. Like it doesn't. There's not really a major story for me to be invested in. I was never invested in the story. Like I read this and then passed it off to you, Bill. I finished it probably three, four weeks ago. And I have a hard time remembering some of the stuff that happened in it. It's because definitely it's good. Just, it's I definitely think that I definitely would recommend it. Um, but I feel like what makes Invincible, like the the parent um, title, so good is the fact that the story is what makes it. The overall story is what makes it. Mm-hmm. I mean, every Marvel comic, every DC comic is like, Oh, there's like, it's like this one's kind of like a one shot. This yeah, one's yeah. kind of like a one shot. And that's it's what like, this felt like. Yeah, it did. Yes, but you're it right. Felt for better like or worse, Marvel though. does Invincible. Yeah, which you know what, Bill? I agree that like that is cool, and I'm glad we got something like that. But 
TJ, you're right. That's what I go for with Invincible. I want like a big overarching story to feel invested in. I didn't feel invested in any of these stories because they're all over as soon as I was invested. Yeah. So that's that's interesting. But I would recommend it to but, Invincible readers. I mean, readers. that's that that's why I liked it because I knew that this was such a short run. Yeah. Like that, I didn't want something to invest in because I knew that it was just a sh- like over with. You know yeah. what I mean? So I would rather just get more of these characters that I like now yeah you know what i mean no that's awesome i think that's great that yeah. we kind of all and also i think that now if you never have is a really good time to read it because it's just more invincible mm-hmm. and it, and you and it's just it, it throws you back in that world it's kind of like behind the scenes and volume one actually starts with invincible mm-hmm. like just like first, just yeah. like volume one of garden the globe started with monster girl and robot mm-hmm. jumping into the flag sign portal yeah uh, issue one of Invincible Universe starts with Mark and Cecil sitting on the ledge at the end of uh, issue 100 of Invincible. Um, I, my favorite character did change from guarding to this, though. Oh, like I, have a different oh favorite character. I, I want to hear that. Hold on. All right, so let's get into uh, spoiler zone now. So Besides uh, Best Tiger, because, I mean, come the fuck on. Well, I mean, that's... Okay, see, that's where I thought you were going. Now, so hold on. Besides hold him. On, let's, Best Tiger shouldn't have been your favorite character in the first one. Let's, let's, Best Tiger is one of my favorite characters in the Invincible Universe. Right. Let's move on into spoilers now. Like, if you haven't read it. Invincible Universe, go pick it up. Uh, I think it's worth reading, especially for someone who likes Invincible, and even more so for someone who read Guarding the Globe. So go, uh, go read it, come back, and listen to us talk about it. Um, so spoilers now. Uh, what do you mean? Who is your fir- favorite character in Guarding the Globe, TJ? I don't even remember his name. Like, fuck that guy. Kaboomerang? No, no, no it was, uh, the Yeti. Oh, Yeti. Yeti? <laughs> <laughs> I realized it as I said it. I realized it as I said it. <laughs> but he was my favorite in the first one, because that's such a cool story. Like, him being okay, a yeah, kid him and him, kid. like, finding out and stuff. Yeah. But Kid Thor is so good in this. I loved Kid Thor in this. The fact cool. that he has to have his hammer, yeah. and the second he puts it down. So did you not remember that was how uh, Robot killed him in issue 112? He blasted no, his, I his hands off. He yeah. blasted his hands off, so yeah. he couldn't, yeah. And then, yeah. I recently went back to 112 before reading this, after reading Guarding. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so after this, you have to go go and look through it again and see yeah, like how, how, all, they, how they all died or how some of how, them died. How could Best Tiger have been your favorite character before reading right? Invincible Universe? I think I read the one shot. You had to have read, you had to have read Invincible you Universe up to that issue. You absolutely had I think I did. to have. Yeah. I think I because did. That, that's because what, I knew all about him. I yeah. knew all about well, I, him. I, I knew that he wasn't more, blind. I yeah. knew all that stuff There's more him. I want to say about that issue when we get to okay. it. All right, before we get into issue one... Uh, just want to give the shout outs to the creators. We got Phil Hester as the writer, Todd Nock as the penciler and inker, Gabe Eltab as the colorist. I think that's how he sp- pronounce his last name. Eltab? Eltab. Uh Of course, the great Russ Wooten. Lettering. He does everything. It's insane. He does everything. Uh, and I think this might have even been after shortly after Sean Mackwitz took over as editor. Um, so, issue one, like we said. This is, uh, word for word, the um, conversation between Mark and Cecil after Mark kills Dinosaurus. With a little bit of, of inner monologuing that you don't, don't know who yeah, is. Yeah, which I thought was cool. The first mm-hmm. two issues have this uh, monologue which, again, going on. again, is very different from Invincible. Mm-hmm. There's no monologuing in Invincible. No, I like that. Um, we get introduced to uh, Edelman. Mm-hmm. And so right from the get-go, this is all about Cecil. The first two issues, like like we said, there's going to be a lot of uh, character issues. Mm-hmm. I think these first two are very much a Cecil right. thing. Um, I agree. Yeah. Would you guys agree that, that Cecil in this seems like a very different person? And maybe it's because we've only seen him interact with Invincible. We I've, haven't really yeah. seen him, so he always has a front on when he's with Invincible. Like he's never really. Yeah, it's almost like he's like it's almost like he's on edge when he's with Invincible because yeah, he knows like, he, he, how powerful he is. Right. And we knew he was a dick before, but after reading this, like he's, he's a, a dick. He's he a is. dick. Oh yeah, he's. I he mean, doesn't give a fuck about anything. No, and like, that's, we'll get into that later. Well, well I won't that's even pretty much up, what these two issues are. Later. I mean, like, he's, he's a fucking asshole. He like we get introduced this uh, his new assistant essentially. Um, his previous one died in the flood. He doesn't show any emotion about it. Yeah. And this is his new one. And he chooses to call her Edelman because that's what 
And he didn't even realize it. She yeah. told him, like, well, I think Edelman was like 10 people ago, and you well, just keep right. calling everybody Edelman. Yeah. And, and she, he's like, well, all she right, says, understood. Edelman, the right? last Edelman wasn't an Edelman either. And he's like, his name was Larry. Um, the, the real Edelman was about 10 assistants ago. And he says, the system is working. Like, that's wow. He's got too much to deal with. He doesn't need to keep learning names. Mm-hmm. He doesn't care about the people around him. He just cares about getting the job done. And this is something that, you know, that's shown a little bit, I think, in Cecil's character. I mean, in Invincible, he's the one that's willing to work with villains and everything like that. So we know that that's his number one priority. But we get to see a little bit more behind the scenes in Invincible Universe, of you know, on him. So, yeah. So, uh, we got to see some of the, you know, different superhero teams around the world helping... Uh, uh, to stop the flooding from dinosaurus. I want to say this issue came out the same time as issue 100 as just kind of like a companion hmm. to go along with it. Um, but one of the big cliffhangers after guarding the globe was what happened with kid Thor, you know, it didn't even show him. It just showed, wait, did it show him? Come it back? showed, no, it showed it her showed set, light. Yeah. Yeah. She set the hammer on his chest and then the light, you know, filling her eyes or whatever. Um, now before guarding the globe, could Kid Thor put his hammer down? Yes. He yeah. could. So yes. it was only after his interaction with Set when he got his soul. That's what sucked keeps him out alive. Him. He's basically in I don't think it has anything to do with Set. It? I think he or with it's it. in his like DNA. Like they talk about like all of the previous people who had the hammer. Mm. They're all immortal as long as they hold the hammer. So just because it was Set that killed him, anybody else could have killed him. He'll die. You know. Because he died. I think it's because he died, which is why every time he dies, he turns back. You understand what money. I'm asking, though, right? Because in guarding the globe, he didn't have to have his hammer on him. Correct. Right. All the time. Yes. Okay. All right. But since he died, I since think now died. it's in the hammer, and he needs right. to. Yeah. So this hammer was passed down to him. Mm-hmm. Could he go to the fucking broken bodies of his ancestors and bring them back with the hammer? Don't they talk about it at one point? No. Was it in guarding the globe? They even show all the previous people for like a split second who held the hammer before him. Hmm. I don't know. I think at some point, though, they pass, it on, pass down the hammer and die. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe that's in capes, which there's a couple times we're going to get cape references. Not only is Kid Thor knockout uh, and knockout from capes, but also um, Bolt, the mm-hmm. black guy in the blue costume. He's from um, capes, and so is... Uh, what's her name? She's in Volume 2 of Invincible Universe. Um, Clairvoyant? Clairvoyant, okay. yeah. She's a... A pretty big character in um, Capes as well. She came out of nowhere in this. She did. She was just literally in that issue, and yep. that was it. Uh, she was in like two, I think, right? Mm, uh, I don't know. Maybe those Oh, two. you know what? She was at the end, too, and, but yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, so yeah, Thor can't die. Kid Thor. Uh, as long as he has this hammer on him. Robot says he's going to develop a... Um, a way to connect it to him. Yeah. A pair of set of gloves that allow him to always hang on to the hammer. Mm-hmm. Uh, what did you think of this uh, scene with Cecil? Where he started to melt? Yeah, his nose fell off. Yeah, that's fucking insane. Yeah, which is cool because so in Invincible, uh, I don't remember who said it. I want to say it was a conversation between Mark and Britt. But at some point, someone says, how does he do it? Like, what, like whatever. Or somebody asks Cecil, or I don't remember. Um, but they mentioned the fact that Cecil sleeps like for a half an hour a day and that's yeah, it I do remember and, that. and they said how do you, how does he do that or something like that and he's like oh well i i sleep in or i rest in goo for a half hour a day so i don't have to sleep or something like that well Britt There's, says here he says director stedman suffered a massive wound in the line of duty years ago he just needs a special treatment every now and then to maintain his artificial skin yes and in, i want to say though in, in invincible that keeps him from having to sleep yeah and we actually do see a page in invincible um, but it's just like from the nose up mm-hmm. and he's in the purple goo. Yeah. But that's all we ever saw of it. So I thought this was kind of cool. This is, we get a little, we get a little behind the scenes on what happens when, you know, he goes too long without his treatment. Um, and then you get to see who was monologuing. Yeah. Do you, do we know that at the end of this issue at that it was end, him? you know it was him. Yeah. yeah. Do you pronounce his name Lou? Yes. Okay. It's I'm L-I-U. So I just wasn't sure. I'm, I'm assuming it is. Yeah. I also, I also said Lou. Yeah. This is another thing that I liked about Invincible Universe is that you actually got backstory about characters that you never thought you wanted to know this, yeah. a backstory about. This is the first villain ever mm-hmm. shown in an Invincible comic. Yeah. 
he like, was he was fighting Omni Man on the TV on like page four or mm-hmm. whatever when Mark comes down the stairs in in, in issue one, um, and we get like backstory. So like there, what was it? There was a dragon that was terrorizing his, this village, and and uh, the only way to stop him was to imprison him inside of inside a human of another body, human being, and that was him. Mm-hmm. So he. And so he's constantly fighting him back or something. But it's something. kind of like a Hulk situation where yeah. he's constantly trying to get out. Um, if he loses consciousness. So this, so he goes to Cecil for help because he's dying. And mm-hmm. if he dies, the dragon will escape. Will be released. And he will be more powerful because, because there will be no... Be, yeah, be, and there will be no essence of Lou left to hold him back. Mm-hmm. So I also like that Robot is explaining... Oh, there's two things that I want to talk about. And I'm glad we're talking about this. Okay. <laughs> um, I like how there's only a little bit of real left to Lou. Like, he's more android oh, yeah. than not. And each time that he has to replace a part of him, the, the dragon, the gets, dragon gets more stronger. stronger and can break out easier. Mm-hmm. So he he's essentially, he's a good guy. Like, yeah. he's stopping I mean, he's, this I feel dragon like he's from, used his dragon ability. Like He's never used it. I don't think he has. Well, there have been times in Invincible where... He has where Mark's fighting him. Like remember when he uses him yeah. to fight Titan, like him and Titan fight. Oh, like yeah. I feel like at yeah. times Lou might, I don't know, bargain with the dragon to to do his bidding for a short time, or maybe he just unleashes him and then brings him back in just so he causes mayhem, weakens his enemy, and then takes him back. But I also think it's crazy that every time he gets procedures done, he has to stay conscious. Do you think the dragon wouldn't be able to kill him? What do you mean? If the dragon, if he releases the dragon, what if the dragon turned on him, killed him? He probably would be able to. Yeah, he should. I would, I would think so. Yeah, he technically should. Um, so in this whole scene, Robot is fighting with Cecil, and he's like, "Let the old man die. Like he's a villain. I don't want to save him." And then Cecil kind of explains that we need to. It'll be worse if we don't. Yeah, it'll like... it'll be worse. Robot. His dialogue in this did not sound like robot at all to me. I think a lot it of sounded the, very childish. Okay, a lot of Invincible Universe robot sounds completely different. And I want to say even in this scene, Cecil calls him Rudy, which is something I that, love that. Yeah. I was going to say that throughout the entire thing. I feel like he it, doesn't it, refer to him as Rex. Yeah, it, it's a very different. And well, thinking about it, like we didn't see a lot of Cecil. Rex interaction between in Invincible, in yeah. Invincible d- between the uh, Flax on Dimension and him killing Cecil. Yeah. So it was interesting that, but I agree, Bill. He sounds younger. He does seem like he's a little bit. He just sounds immature. Like he doesn't sound like he. There's like, a couple scenes with Amanda where he sounds like. Right. There's one scene here. He's like, "Let the old maniac go. We can handle the dragon. Have Invincible punch him through the sun or something." Like him talking like that or something. It just sound. It didn't sound hmm. like him, or he's even the one that says "son of a bitch." Yeah, yeah. When it, like when very, it fails. Yeah, very. Which was a, a cool scene. Mm-hmm. So the issue ends with you know, mm-hmm. the dragon being released because the the surgery is failing and he's losing him. Well, he only lost him for a second. Yeah. He only fell unconscious for like one moment, and that was enough for the dragon to escape. Mm-hmm. And that's how the episode or the first issue ends. Yeah, issue two: dragons wreaking havoc. Um, and this is kind of what I was talking about too, about how Cecil is kind of a dick in this, because they're they're all fighting him, and they're you know having trouble with him. So Edelman is like, we got to call in the cavalry. So he call she they call um, Kid Thor, and Outrun. No, knockout. Knockout. Mm-hmm. I always get them mixed up. Yeah. Uh, who are on their honeymoon, and they come back, and they were no, like, no, they're um. Sorry, they're not. She wants to propose to him. They're just out oh, on a date. Oh, that's right. I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah, they're out on a date. And she um, actually goes to propose to him. Yeah, and then... Uh, Popper. Popper shows up, takes him back to uh, to the dragon. And then Invincible and Immortal show up. Mm-hmm. Which is such a cool part. Mm-hmm. Because it's just refreshing. Yeah. It, it is an awesome two-page and spread. And Wolfman and Mecha Maid, like you see everybody. Yeah, there's... Yeah. there's uh, Tech Jacket... Yep, there's the actioneers. Oh yeah, the there's, actioneers are in this too. Powerplex, Mecha Maid, no, that's cat actioneers. capes. Yeah, well, Mecha Maid, I, I don't consider an actioneer. I just, I mean, she is, and that's Mecha where Maid she came and Wolfman, from. so cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, uh, what happens? It, oh yeah, 
I liked uh, El Chupacabra stopping some of the villains because all this is happening at the um, Stronghold prison. Yeah. And so we got some uh, villain cameos. Uh, Doc kill, Seismic. Yeah, Doc Seismic, Kill Cannon, uh, Kursk. But yeah, El Chupacabra. El Chupa, El Chuprabe? El Chuprabe. El Chuprabe? Oh, man. El Chupacabra. Chupacabra. Oh, you got to say it chua. faster. You got to say Chu in the beginning. El Chupacabra. Chupacabra. Yeah. Uh, I like how they, the action here, uh, Code Blue, they they make a joke at the fact that nobody can remember his name. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyways, so they're trying to fix, uh, Robot's still trying to fix uh, Lou and, uh, is it Master Lou? What do they call him? Mr. Lou? I think it's Master. Is it Master Lou? And, uh, Robot has uh, Wolfman rip open one of the other robot heads to... He's going to swap out the brain. The brain of one of the robots with Master Lou. Well, one hemisphere of the brain. Mm. Yeah. We get to see Invincible for, you know, a few panels. He actually goes inside the dragon and he's fighting him there. Um, He disappears because, you know, it successfully worked and Lou is able to maintain him again. Uh... And he vanishes, right? Isotope shows up, teleports him away. Oh, yeah. And then there's this... The the end of this issue is the the, the whole reason why I think Cecil is portrayed as such a dick in this in these two issues is this whole thing that's being narrated by Master Lu. Um, but it carries on even past this issue. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, you get to see why, though. I think that's yeah. the point of these, is why he is the way he is. So Edelman was killed mm-hmm. in, the, uh, in the fight. And what I wanted to bring up before, too, in the first issue was that he actually got pissed off at her when he was when he was they were walking around and he saw a picture uh, by her either daughter or son Mm -hmm. hanging up at her desk. And he like freaked out and he said, do you see any other pictures around here? This is a a professional place and and you, you can't have this hanging around. Well, now that she's dead, he goes back and looks at the picture and you can tell that he's regretting screaming at her yeah well the cool part is the last page Mm -hmm. it shows all of the artwork from all the previous i'm assuming like co-workers that have died that have died family pictures drawings like so did you guys take this as he's always held on to the things or that from now on he cares no, he's no. always held on to them. Because like they're stacked obvi- there would layered. only be her picture up there if that were the case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's always cared, but it took her dying for him to finally take on, like, not call them Edelman anymore. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. they have that moment at the end where it's all about, you know, him not calling them Edelman. Like, they are people. So. Yeah, there's a little uh, science dog. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah, that was kind of Cecil's story, as well as an introduction to all the guardians again Mm -hmm. and then we get our first like solo adventure um which i did not think i was going to like chupacabra yeah yeah uh i thought it was a cool intro to his story the fact that he's he keeps seeing um cast iron dying over and over which was a big turning point in uh his story story. that's like basically his origin story (laughs) as Um, far as we're concerned he keeps seeing different villains show up and killing him like we've got you know the walking dread uh, Mantis and everybody showing up, but his whole story was him going uh, to I'm assuming Russia, mm-hmm. right? And uh, well, Sokole, wherever it is. Oh, okay. Yeah, interesting. And uh, he he wants to go like what pays respects and like he needs to tell Cast Iron's family, kind of get it off his chest and atone for what he's done. Like he feels to blame. For right. it. He he needs to tell them not only that he saved him, but because he was drunk. Yes. Like yeah. why he mm-hmm. died. Yeah. He believes he believes that it's his fault because he was drunk mm-hmm. during it, and uh, and he died a hero by sacrificing. Himself. So now El Chupacabra has no superpowers, right? He's not very know agile. Of. He's just agile. Yeah. Right. Can yeah. Like, not that we know of. I don't know if he's there's got very any... sharp claws. Well, his yeah. scratching. His scratching powers go. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, not that I know. So long story short, he goes and to, meets the father. To, to meets the father, who's like a farmer, you think, but he's actually a cartel. Mm-hmm. And the whole like village is afraid of him, mm-hmm. and they all have the power to turn the same as cast iron. Yeah, yeah, yeah to, to turn to, into to iron turn, or whatever. Yeah, it is. So I like so that because it was like but, it runs in the family. But what's yeah. funny about it too is that he didn't even give a shit that he killed cast iron because he no. said, he thought he said he was weak and he left him. You know. 
He oh, didn't give a well, shit because about he went to go be, be a hero, right? Yeah. He came, yeah, he became a hero as opposed to being a fucking part of the family cartel. Right. Yeah. But then he's, and then, you know, Al, Al Chupacabra was on his way out and he said, well, even though we didn't like him, we didn't give a shit about him, he was still our family. And then the brothers show up and they all turn to cast iron. Yeah. Right, so one of the funniest parts in this, because he's he's running, he doesn't have his costume on, he, he it, didn't go there to fight. This felt like a movie like to me. This, like, trapped in the house, yeah, like, he's on felt, his own. Like yeah, that's, that's the thing, like, yeah, it wasn't, like, this crazy overarching enemy thing, but it was a one-shot with him, and I I, I was enthralled. Yeah. I, more so than I was with guarding, guarding the Globe. But there's a scene where he goes, and he sees the grandma, and he's like, oh, relax, you know, I'm not going to hurt you, it's okay, just shh, just don't yell. And, she tur- and you see him go to touch her hand, and she starts to turn into the the cast iron whatever, and he's like, "You got to be kidding me!" And then the next shot is him being thrown out the window punched, by yeah. by grandma. Oh, punched out the window, yeah. Yep. So everybody is, and that's that scene was crazy. The uh, they throw him, they capture him after that, and they throw him to the pigs who haven't been fed in days or something like that, um, assuming they were going to eat him, mm-hmm. which is a little weird to me. I don't know. And maybe it's a cartel thing. Maybe if we were a part of a cartel, we, we'd have our own pig pen of pigs that eat Well, not even that. No, not, that bodies. doesn't bother me, but can pigs... I mean, oh, yeah. Will, will pigs eat you? Sure. Really? Sure. If they're trained... Anything will eat you. If, if they're starving? Trained, yeah, if they're trained <laughs> to eat you. Anything will eat you. Yeah. Uh, but they don't. Instead, it's very gruesome. Uh, uh, he kills all uh, the pigs. Oh, kills all of them. Yeah. <laughs> With his... Slicey power, which he doesn't even have though at this point. Well, he doesn't maybe, even have his costume. He does have really. I don't know. Sharp um, fingernails. But yeah. So, anyways, he ends up like stealing some of the C four. Um, he's backed up against a mine or a dam. Sorry. And mm-hmm. then at one point, he blows up the dam and. Do you float? And so, it's, can yeah. you can you float? Mm-hmm. Time to float. So he got he. Oh, nice. So he got all he he figured that the only way to stop them was to have them turn back into their normal form. Yeah, doesn't he, like... Uh, he says that they, they he literally has to jump from one to the other as they... As they surface. As they surface, yeah. because they can only surface by going back into their human form. Yeah, he was like, and it was as like they whack-a-mole. do that, he just, he just uh, picks them off one by one. Yep. Yeah. It was a lot like whack-a-mole. Um, yep, all throughout this, too, they called him weak for not drinking. Um, and uh, so we got the scenes, you know... We were um, reminded that he uh, he is the recovering alcoholic, and there's more to that story as well as we get as we go on. So, issue four. Here my God, go. my God. This is is this not one of the best issues of Invincible anything? So, remember when we played Super Fight? This is what I was thinking the entire time. And he was against. I'm pretty sure it was Oliver. It wasn't. It was, either way, it was a Viltrumite. It was a Viltrumite. There, I yeah. thought it was and Invincible. I either way, yeah. Tiger I don't remember, Invincible. but it was a Viltrumite. Or it was Zand. It was either him or Zando. Yeah. And so the entire time I'm sitting here, I'm like, God, I want to say it. I want to say it. He would beat Invincible. But I didn't want to ruin it for you, Bill. So, Bill, what did you think of this issue? <sighs> I I thoroughly enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Um, essentially. First off, the cover is incredible. I yeah, love the cover it's, for this. It's him standing over all the dead guardians. Mm-hmm. And it, it's him killing all the guardians. Yeah. But I obviously you know that they're not dead and it's not real. Yeah. So I didn't know if it was a dream but, or but like... You're on, but you're along for the ride. You don't care. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, of course, Miss Popper was the first to go. So she gets just shot in the head. Oh, yeah, because she could Be- teleport in yeah, and out. Yeah, like, because had to so take her off. Smart. Right? Yeah, it's it's This is so fucking genius there's people out there that wrote this character that are as smart as him that's crazy to me <laughs> yeah you know good job phil hester <laughs> yeah well done um but yeah i mean best tiger just and he's talking to somebody this whole time like somebody's asking him like so go on tell me how did you kill them how did yeah. you kill them what did you do and oh yeah you, oh, you did that. that's a good idea as yeah. he's describing it we're seeing it mm-hmm Mm-hmm. Next, he takes off um, knockout, knockout, and Kid Thor, which is smart. You know, standing on the edge of a cliff with knockout, pushing her into lava, and saying that sentimentality is what killed Kid Thor because right. he he would have to let go of the hammer in order to catch her. But by doing so, uh, it uh, it reverts him back to his death. dead self. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then they telling, both fall to their death in in lava. Telling Monster Girl like. This is your last chance. Throw throw the people up here so that only you have to die. Mm-hmm. Like, ah. And then she didn't, and he just killed them all. Cut, killed them all, anyways. This was my favorite. And it's so like brutal and he, like gory too. A lot of this. 
So what's the dog? Le, Le, Le Bruiser. Le Bruiser, who's actually a girl. Yeah, we find out. Yeah, yeah. later yeah. on. Um, he just tosses her a grenade. He's like, yeah. fetch. You want to play fetch? And then... Well, he thinks that, or she thinks that Best Tiger is a friend. She so has no he, reason to think it's not. That it's not a grenade, a fucking, you know, explosive mm-hmm. device. She catches it and... To be fair, though, we have to remember all so of this too. is is not necessarily true to the characters. You know what I mean? Like, I Le, think Le, Bruiser, is... Le Bruiser might know, like, you just threw a grenade and not go for it. But Best Tiger is telling this person that... Le Bruiser is like dumb enough to fall for that, which is you know it's as long well, as it's believable enough. We don't know that. No, yet. no, I'm just saying. Upon right. rereading it, you know, if you'd say like, uh, would they really do that? Would Kid Thor really drop his hammer? You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. yeah, probably. But this is all, this is all a lie. So, to begin what do with. you guys think about this next part? He literally just takes out his gun and shoots robot right in the head. That's all he easy. would have to do. Fucking mm-hmm. easy. Do you think that that's believable? Yeah. Yes, and again, to who, he's, to who he is talking to, absolutely. You know? Um, he has but at no the reason same to... time, But at the same time, you don't think Robot is smart enough to know that he's already picked off, what, four other, four oh, or five other people? Again, he is. I he, feel like he Robot says, is good so man, what, smart. He said what That's happened... What makes in, him a villain. He said what happened in Indonesia. Tell me, tell tell me, me Amanda, Amanda is Amanda. all... Yeah. How would he not know? He does know. He said... He says me. Amanda's dead. He doesn't know that it was Best Tiger. Though. But that's what I mean. Like, yeah, you think he should know. Yeah. I feel like the robot that we know should know. Yeah, probably. But again, it's all a lie anyways. Like, he's telling him a believable story. Which, yeah, that's believable. But we know it probably wouldn't go that way. So then he's back at headquarters. And it's now Outrun, Kaboomerang, and Yeti's turn. Oh, this part is so brutal. So, so Kaboomerang... Outrun is running. Mm-hmm. That's her power. And I like how he said uh, uh, she remembers from our previous fight right. what to do. So she stays at a distance. Mm-hmm. And Kaboomerang throws... What What does he say? He's like, I... Oh, he... He's taking advantage of their anger and right. rage at this point. But he knows how Kaboomerang works. And instead of going where he thinks the boomerang's going to be, he actually rushes the, the boomerang mm-hmm. as opposed to running away from it. And it ends up blowing up in Outrun's face. Yes, instead of on him because he went towards the right. boomerang. Yeah. And then he knows that Yeti's hide is too tough because Yeti's like, you can't fight me, you know. Oh, and then this is, TJ, you probably like this part. Yeah, he jumps inside Where he was of like, Yeti's mouth. You were mouth. always my favorite. You were my favorite. Like, mm-hmm. Yeti's saying that. Yeah. He jumps he, inside of Yeti. And cuts, him, cuts that, himself out of Yeti. Those are his bullets. That's brutal. No, that's. I thought I took that as his knife. Just oh, stabbing. yeah. Punk, yeah. punk, punk, yep. Stag stepping him from the inside out. Kaboomerang is crying as he's attacking. And then he just shoots him in the back of the head. Oh, Kaboomerang holding uh, holding Outrun, Outrun and her face is mm-hmm. burnt off. And just saying, just get it over with. So now... So here we go. We've got... Uh, Zandal. Zandal versus... versus uh, Best Tiger. Best Tiger. And I think that this... We'll, we'll have to go back, but I'm pretty sure that this is the situation. So that we had in, he, in Super Fight. He says Best Tiger, without even looking, mm-hmm. fires two shots because he knows his patterns. He knows how Bulletproof flies, how he maneuvers, and he fires two bullets. One... Uh, Ricochets. One at him and one where he will be. You right. know, knowing that he'll dodge one and then where he would dodge into. Ricochets so he knows where, he, where he's going to end up. And then, um, and then Bulletproof smashes he, into the... He, well, uh, he... No, so... Head. So what he's explaining is that bulletproof is going at him at oh, such yeah, a velocity so slow, yeah. that the bullet going towards him normally it would be like a B, but now yeah. with his velocity plus the bullets, it's lethal. Yeah. So he shot yeah. at one bullet at him, so he would move out of the way, and one where he knew he would be, mm-hmm. shot him through the eye, and then the landscape did the rest. Yeah, and he then he crashed into crashed the into the fucking mountain, and his head fell he off. Like exploded. He like exploded. He just blew the half right. and then two halves. Yeah. Now he flies a jet. So now he's in a jet. Like I, lo- it was just like beat to beat. It was, like, yeah, it it was, was, yeah. He's very like Batman ish. Yeah. Like very like stone faced the whole time. Mm-hmm. Always knows so, his opponent's move before he makes it. So he killed Black Samson by flying the jet into him. Mm-hmm. He ejects out of the jet and crashes the jet into Black Samson again. In reality, would this kill Black Samson? I mean, we don't we don't know. It's not. It doesn't matter. Uh, and then as he's parachuting down, he uses like a boomerang blade to clip uh, Pegasus's wings, and then she falls to her she death. She just falls to her death. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then he goes, and it is now Cecil. 
mm-hmm. and Donald. Donald in the White Room with a bunch of Re-Animan. the Reanimen, the Viltrumite Reanimen. Yeah, the Invincible ones, the yeah. alternate Invincible Reanimen. So, how does he kill them? He shoots a bullet through the air ducts into <laughs> the um, thing that that it, it, that controls the it White represses, Room. No, it represses the. Um, well, it stops Cecil's control over the Reanimen. Yeah, so he can't control them. Mm. So then, what? What bulletproof or bulletproof? What? Best Tiger's describing is that now the Reanimen have just the the slightest bit of memory of of what Cecil did to them and who they once were, and they just turn on tear him apart, mm-hmm. tear him and Donald apart, all yep. the Reanimen. And we're not done yet. Then he goes into the basement of the Pentagon where Cecil has some sort of portal, and I love this because how is Best Tiger going to kill Brit? You can't he's, kill Brit. He's Brick. not going to. He doesn't. But instead, he traps him in another dimension. He opens up a portal. And pushes, uh, throws Brit into it, and then uh, Shapesmith, like I love how he like latches onto something mm-hmm. like as a tether, jumps in after Brit, and then Best Tiger just closes the door and cuts off his arm, Shapesmith's arm, and they're lost in some other dimension. So this was the one that he he said he couldn't. He was surprised that El Chupacabra yeah this was, his was there thing. because he was assuming that he would cower. Yeah. And run away. And, and run away. And he came out of nowhere. And he said, uh, what was it? We battled for an eternity in those few minutes. So this was almost like his 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 most brutal, longest fight. Mm-hmm. Which was all only a these. few minutes. Yeah. His fury combined with my fatigue to make us equals on the battlefield. So I afforded him a respect I had paid no man since childhood and watched him die with my own eyes. As he took off his bandana. Badass. Yep. And just cracked Snapped his neck. Snapped his neck. Oh. And that's how Best Tiger killed everyone. But meanwhile, this entire story that he's been weaving was just biding his time so he could track down the person who's inside his mind, uh, and that would be Insomniac, a villain that you saw briefly in mm-hmm. Guarding the Globe. Oh, yeah. That is so smart because he never sleeps. Yeah. I did not know that he was a telepath. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah. And so he was trying, he was probing Best Tiger to try and figure out how to kill right. all the Guardians and get him to, like... And so he shows up, he weaves this lie, and he shows up and he's like, uh, he's threatening to kill Insomniac. And Insomniac's like, no, no, you can't kill me. And Best Tiger's like, no, I'm not going to kill you. I'm just going to kill your power. And he's like, what, you're going to lobotomize me? You don't know how to, like, where would you even know how to do that? And he's like, you opened up your mind to me for so long, I was able to pinpoint exactly where mm-hmm. where, to where to shoot. shoot. And he's going to lobotomize him with a gun. Which he does. Which he does. He shoots a bullet and it ricochets around the room and goes up through his neck and lobotomizes him. Was the ricocheting necessary? He has to get that right angle, man. Mm. I mean, he probably could have, but, then, probably, but then the bullet would have been too powerful. Too fast, yeah. He needed it to be... Because you, you, he, you didn't see, wanna, he didn't kill him. You True. see that there is no exit of the bullet. It yeah. didn't go all the way through his head. It went through his chin. Yep. And just... Yep. Fucking lobotomized Crazy. him. Crazy. And then it just ends with him showing up to a, a, a party... With all the guardians, and they're like, "Oh, you missed all the fun. You got to start pulling your weight around here." Mm-hmm. Best tiger giving us a knowing look. It's so good. I love that issue. What's it's crazy so to me is that Kirkman didn't do more with this character. And that's what Kirkman he said, said to, to us, us in yeah, our interview. He I know. said if one one character he could have written more, or he could have done more with, it would be Best Tiger. Yeah. I'm. Uh, I'm. You know what? I'm. Oh wait, have we seen Best Tiger in Invincible since? The, oh, he was there during the robot war, wasn't he? Yeah, he okay. was just there in the background. Just in the background. Yep. Man, I'm glad so that I didn't, I'm glad that I didn't read this first because I would have been more mad. Yeah, that I'm you like, didn't get to why see the more fuck of him. Didn't he do more? Yeah. Yeah. All right. On to issue five. It starts off with some uh, mind controlled gorillas um, wearing V for Vendetta masks. Yeah, which I, you know what I watched the other day for the first time in years. When was the last time you watched it, Bill? V for Vendetta. Yeah. Mm, this year really no 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 no. because that would have been three months ago well within Um, the last year within the last year yeah yeah i'm not gonna say it doesn't hold up as well as it once did when i first saw it it's still it's still a good movie Mm -hmm. it's become more um comic booky if that makes sense yeah like blade one it, it almost feels like sin city where it's like this is clearly like a comic book like you could tell the lines that were originally stylized Mm -hmm. yeah it's very like and the story is it's slow and it's a little long but it's still really good Mm -hmm. yeah i still thoroughly enjoy it do you yeah 
Um, but anyways, uh, so yeah, there's just, just the, there's a lot of unrest going on right now because of what happened with Dinosaurus. And there's this big meeting at the UN and there's a lot of people um, up in arms about it. And so... Uh, uh, this this is this is definitely one of the lows that I was talking about. Yeah, it's, like, I mean, well, well, this whole bank heist thing in the beginning doesn't really have much to do with anything. It's yeah. just kind of like, oh, what they're doing, like what the guardians are doing, while the other guardians are off in North Korea. So um, at this big UN meeting is um, Cho. What is his name? General Cho. Um, yeah, General Cho. Supreme Leader Cho. Yeah, yeah, um, of North Korea. And he's and, he's the one. That best tiger, no, no, no. What what did they say that he was doing in the first one? He was in Guardians. Set, or Guardian. set um, met up with him and gave him powers. Okay. We never saw him again. That was a loose thread from Guarding the Globe. Oh. No. Yeah. We saw him. He talks about his father, um, Supreme Leader Cho's father worked with Set or something like that. And then when he died, Supreme Leader Cho was given powers by Set to help him do whatever. But we never really saw it. Um, but anyways, uh, the the Guardians are. Uh, infiltrating Supreme Leader Cho's base in North Korea, looking for signs that he's up to no good, mm-hmm. essentially. Um, it's Best Tiger being tortured. Yeah. Um, well, who's, who's the team? There's three well, of them. Best. Well, Best Tiger gets uh, gets out of his torture situation. Like, he was there intentionally. Like, he gets the upper hand in a pretty, great, pretty cool scene. And then Shapesmith kicks in the door late, and opens his mouth and out climbs Hunter. Hunter from fucking Wolfman. From Wolfman. Yeah. That was pretty cool. I like seeing that. That was a, a, a good idea to bring that character yeah. back. And sh- so to, to reiterate, Shapesmith was wrapped around, was wearing Hunter like a Shapesmith suit. Like a Shapesmith, like an Edgar suit. I feel suit. like he yeah. would be really, really fat. He would be bigger than that? And I got the Men in Black reference. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, what do you mean? Why, why wouldn't he just be able to press... Yeah, tightly he, against yeah he could do that uh i guess yeah he he's wearing him like a, a suit like he's pretty thin Edgar, skin like is a, hanging off your bones <laughs> Edgar, your skin's coming off your bones so this is the first of a few scenes between outrun and kaboomerang now we know from last uh series that they had a thing for each other um mm-hmm. at the end when you know and we, he was a virgin. Yeah, we find out that, you know, while she was possessed, all that stuff happened. And then, so we see that their their relationship is moving along. And she's biting her lower lip, and she wants to a have lot. sex with him. And he's like, let's wait. I was, like, wondering, like, I didn't think that she was, like, possessed again. But at the same time, going her going from guarding the globe being like this, like, very sultry and very, like, wanting to have sex with everybody and everything... And then it, it guarding the globe ended with her being like, "I'm not even like that. How did you not?" Yeah, but th- that know? scene ended with her being taken aback by the fact that he actually had feelings for her. Right. So she she, she was even like crying. I know, moment. but I'm thinking from a writer's perspective, like, um, if I were to go going into this, I wanted to know what she's actually like. But with her obsession with not obsession, but like her want for El Chupacabra to have sex with him her personality came off the same to me as guarding yeah. i know that there were different intentions in guarding obviously because that wasn't her yeah but i think they wanted to get to the point where they had a relationship without they would have to deal with that though yeah yeah and i mean do they even talk I felt about like it, it should have been the other the opposite like the they other even yeah they talk about it about like not rushing it and they want it to be real this time well, he and doesn't like want to rush it yeah i don't know Maybe that's just a difference in their personalities. Um, so this volume ends with uh, issue six, and it's... Uh, Cho killing We everybody. found out that at the UN, where Supreme Leader Cho was, he didn't, in fact, bring any kind of army or anything like that. He is a super being himself. Um, and then chapter six is uh, the Guardians rushing into the UN to stop Supreme Leader Cho and getting their asses kicked right away mm-hmm. uh what was it he um, breaks every single bone in monster girl's body that's what it was yeah like he, she was hit by multiple different people at the same time yeah and i got to admit i didn't really like this Which so part? they tell her to just transform back into a girl and that'll save you i felt like that was kind of copying wolfman a little it bit probably is like wolfman did have we ever seen her do that before no no Can't she do that never she's never done that in invincible 
Like if she's hurt, transfer back, and yeah. then and she then can. she'll be okay. Yeah, I don't know if that's one of her powers that we knew of. Well, yeah, that we knew of. Yeah, it wasn't. Hmm. Right in. Like, let me know if that's something that we've seen in previous Invincible. Otherwise, I'll keep an eye out for that too. I don't know. Maybe that is something that Phil Hester. It's added. something. That's that... something that I loved about Wolfman, and yeah. then they gave it to her, and I'm like, oh. Yeah. Well. You're right. That does seem a little odd. But then again, like, think of all the times. Like, has she been hurt so badly before in the monster form that she should have mm. been? She's never been hurt like this. Yeah. Which, Interesting. Which is weird and ironic because Wolfman makes an appearance in the second volume mm-hmm. where he's drastically hurt and, and he doesn't, doesn't turn back to human form to heal himself. Mm-hmm. He just stays super weak in wolf form. And I was confused by that. I'm like, why is he just But at the same time, back? if he changes back into human form, he's vulnerable. Yeah, but they weren't going to... We'll get to it. Yeah. yeah we'll... Um, more scenes with uh, OutRun and Kaboomerang. They're about to do it, and then and then Donald, Donald shows comes up and says, "We gotta go." People showing up through like portals and stuff, always ruining the moment. Um, but yeah, I liked this. Uh, I liked this uh, strategy where they had Immortal fly up into space and then fly straight down and just essentially mm-hmm. nuke the building. That was really really cool. Like you see, the panel is so big of him flying down, and then to the right of him is just like him going all the way through the skyscraper and mm-hmm. just demolishing it. Uh, on top of Supreme Leader Cho, uh, they have a, a fight. Cool panels are here of them fighting through the air, through different landscapes. Um, Showing how fast he is. Mm-hmm. Uh, our team in North Korea finds the weapon that's used to stop him because he experimented on a bunch of people and needed a way in order to kill them because he wanted to be the only one with those powers. Mm-hmm. So he created a weapon, but then disassembled it. And there's a guy there that's able to help them reassemble it. Um, meanwhile, Brit is fighting uh, General Tro- uh, Supreme Leader Cho. And it turns out, uh, like, I like this. I like Cecil showing up saying, oh, yeah, we, we surrender. Um, y- you know, you're in charge of the world, you know. Uh, right this way. Yeah, right this way. <laughs> uh, we need you to send some paperwork. And he's like, all right. And he goes and they're, uh, they've got, like, all these women all over him and everything. And he's like, wait, what are you doing to me? What are you doing to me? And then uh, it turns out. He says he feels weak. Yeah. He's actually in the white room. And he's actually underneath the machine that they reassembled. That's basically a beam that's pressure, like that puts it pressure creates on creates weight. Yeah. yeah. And uh, they're like, oh, yeah, we've got this set to be just enough weight to keep you held down for as long as we want and then it just like he explodes splats him against the floor Mm -hmm. and the one guy the old guy that put it back together is like oh oops sorry didn't mean to crush him Mm -hmm. uh and this this volume ends with uh cecil basically creating their own uh black ops team it's kind of like a weapon x style Mm -hmm. uh you know undercover team uh and he talks about striking first you know what i mean being so very this is aggressive interesting because who's in the background there so yeah we've got wolfman front and center best tiger hunter um what is his name again um slaying mantis slaying mantis thanks uh which is an awesome mm-hmm. name for a villain but isn't he he's a villain yeah slaying mantis is a villain and they've recruited him yep and uh popper mrs, mrs. Popper. popper uh zandal and more uh, invincible as well as clairvoyant in the back who we saw for like a brief second in the beginning during that big fight with the dragon, but otherwise we haven't seen much of at all. Now she is a character from um, Capes. And that's pretty much all you really need to know uh, about her. She does have a story arc in Capes that's interesting that you guys are going to have to just see when you get to it. There's not Mm -hmm. much more to say. Mm -hmm. Uh, Volume 2 starts with issue 7. And we've got another character. Kind of a one shot. One shot. Another one of my favorite ones. This one was fun. Not yeah, a lot of not really a lot fun. of dialogue. It was fun though. And uh it's this is, so you find out Le Bruiser is a girl. Mm-hmm. And she sees a dog playing outside and wants to go play. So Zandal, in a really compassionate moment, is like, Oh, I'll go play with you. Yeah. Like, let's go play catch. Throws the fr- frisbee way too far. And Le Bruiser goes and gets it, and now is in the middle of the city, and mm-hmm. where his adventure her takes place. Her adventure. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the, the she, adventure. Mm. Mm. 
the uh, uh, at one point she sees a puppy that she's smitten with. She's attracted. Yeah, and uh, the dog gets thrown into a cage, and she goes after the dog trying to save him, gets lost, turned around, and uh, I like how you know she's looking for food, and there's like a burger place, a chicken place, and then there's a French restaurant. Mm-hmm. So she'll only eat out of the dumpster of a French restaurant. Um, but then she gets you know caught. She gets thrown into a, a, a dog fighting ring. Yeah, it's a dog fighting ring where that what that other dog was being kidnapped for. And then she rushes in and rips off the arm of one of the guys with the with the with the what taser. is that called? The rod. It's a a pro, um a, it's like an electrical prod rod. Yeah, it's a prod rod. It's a prod rod. Yeah, it's, yeah. What, it's like what you would. But use. she rips the guy's arm off. That's holding the. The prod rod. prod rod and uh, is using that as like a weapon to go around and stun everybody stun rod prod i rod. like prod rod better okay <laughs> makes no sense <laughs> um the guy holding its name is todd it's yeah. todd's prod rod, it's todd's prod rod. <laughs> <laughs> um oh you see her nipples look so she's a girl oh look at that yeah i didn't catch that mm-hmm uh yeah so she jumps on uh the getaway van's car and it goes straight to magnetax uh lair uh she takes out all his all of his goons uh magnetech throws a bomb uh, uh, that's about to detonate at her she whips it around throws it back at him blows him up uh and walks away and just, just walks away from it you know firemen are there putting it out and uh goes back to the guardians and she finds a way back home that's it yeah they uh they uh, they adopted the the little dog mm-hmm. that uh she was attracted to earlier on and they go play fetch with her, and that's that's the end of her little story. Hmm. Does robot kill her? What? Where's where is she during? I think she's still alive. Yeah. I don't remember seeing her in the I feel final like, issue. I feel though. like she would have been like mm-hmm. in the background. You know what I mean? I don't think she's in one twelve. We need Robert Kirkman to create a uh, an alternate uh, a story for us on the spot. Like well, what is, happened uh, is in between a, this and 112? Is she no. ever in Invincible? Because I don't ever yes. remember seeing her in Invincible. I'm pretty sure um, between, well, during Guarding the Globe, when Mark is sick, the all the Guardians of the Globe fight in space. Um, they actually go to stop Alan and um, Oliver when they're coming down with the Scourge virus. Is she a part of the Guardians? And I'm pretty sure she then, has though? a little, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Because kid, because... Uh, What's the, a Japan Droid is in there and everything like that. Hmm. Um, here, uh, the issue. This issue ends with um, uh, a tease at the Lizard League recruiting, and they turn someone into another member of the Lizard League. Take that for a second, Bill. I'm gonna look at this. Go ahead. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. All right. So now we get to we get back to another high for me. Yeah. So you, Which is so, Wolfman. So chapter two is all about Wolfman and Red Eye, who made an appearance in Guarding the Globe as like when they were introducing all the villains and he was like barely in it at all. But mm-hmm. all you know Again, about though, him... Again, I like, though, I like that they're like, here's Insomniac, here's Red Eye. Mm-hmm. Like, Phil Hester yeah. was taking advantage of this rogues gallery yeah. of all these cool villains. And created a crazy backstory yes. for him. Yes, yeah. not just like using him in a fight. Like, right. He actually had, like, this takes place mm-hmm. at his compound and everything. So he's in he's in a prison that he built that's essentially a mansion because he is a, like, bajillionaire mm-hmm. in terms of, like, drug running and all that other stuff. And he kills this guy at, to find his son hiding in the closet whose name is Davi. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. he kind of takes Davi. Adopts him. Uh, well, kidnaps him. And kind of makes him into his own little in his own son slave kind of thing. Yeah. So the next scene is slaying Mantis there, saying that you know he's he thank you know thanks him for meeting him because he's we, like hiding out in. Do we know he's undercover? No. Slaying Mantis at this point. No, not until he puts the helmet down, and um, says essentially that he's a part of the bounty that's after him, mm-hmm. which was a stupid mistake. Mm-hmm. Like he, like trying to make a reveal. I feel like Wolfman could have got the jump on him. If he had, had Matt just kept his fucking mouth shut. Mm. But Bro, well, actually, so Wolfman, Wolfman would have got the, the jump. If it wasn't for Dobby. If it wasn't for Dobby. He jumps through a, a portal that, that Mrs. Popper opened up and said, whoa, watch the kid. So he was taken back like he was, yeah. And he gets 
blasted sh- blasted in the chest by red by red eye. eye and popper escapes through a portal but, but also not, but not before she gets hit by oh that's right she got shot a laser too. beam yeah the laser beam actually went through the portal with her yeah doesn't so, it go through her yeah. yeah so wolfman is is out for the count dobby goes up to him and red eye was like oh we'll keep him Mm-hmm. As he can be your pet. And so at this point, from now cell. on, even though this is a cool story with Wolfman, I didn't even consider that he could turn back into human form. I don't know why, why it didn't cross my mind. It, the whole time with me when he was like hallucinating. Yeah. Um. So, well, here's the scene. Maybe get, is it because he he's not in the right frame of mind? Maybe. Hmm. I, I would assume that he always is, though. So here, Mrs. Popper pops back to the Pentagon and she pops back with the laser going through her. Mm-hmm. But she's still alive. Yeah. Um, and I liked seeing this. I liked seeing the 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 Black Ops team like in action and mm-hmm. interacting of, with each other. Instead of the bandana, he's Best Tiger sunglasses. uses sunglasses. Well, he still has a bandana. Oh yeah, but he he uses right. this. He only pulls out the bandana for like a certain Fighting. reason. Later. Yeah. Right. So clairvoyant to and Best even. Tiger yeah. <laughs> are on the outside of the penitentiary, or Red Eyes Prison Mansion. Yeah. Um, as part of like the Slaying Mantis. Wolfman and Mrs. Popper are all there, mm-hmm. um, essentially to take him out, right? Yeah. So, so here Dobby, I don't understand. Like, he's do, so weak, he would just naturally go back to human form. You're talking about Wolfman yeah. in the cell. Yeah. Still broken. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't even think about that. That's interesting. It bothered me. Dobby's uh, trying to so get Dobby's him to drink. So Dobby's treating him like a dog. Like a dog, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, like a dog. dog. Yeah, like drink dog, you drink here, have some water. Trying to make him feel better. Claire... Clairvoyant and Best Tiger know that something's up because they haven't heard from Wolfman. And Clairvoyant, like, yeah, she her can, power. So she can, she can. I guess she's kind of like, um, like a Jean Grey. A Jean Grey, yeah. yeah like or she'll, she's, she'll, she can whatever you call it. She can, she can manipulate people into like doing things for her, but then she can also like, she's psychic. Like she's saying that she can't see into the building. She can't see where they yeah. are. So she's she's a telepath. And she's yeah, and she should be able to she's like it's it's like a white fog or like yeah. white static that I can't see through. Yeah. She's a telepath. Um they run into Slang Mantis. Um Who isn't he like doesn't doesn't he act like a villain throughout this where he's like I I'm I'm out. Like Yeah, he doesn't give a shit about them. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Yep, yeah, more Wolfman. Oh, so so Wolfman talks to Dobby, and this is kinda cool. Because he's calling her, him, Chloe. Yeah. He's like, oh, help me, Chloe. Um, which is her daughter. Which or is his, his daughter. daughter. Yeah. So he got so he got shot in a moment in which he was trying to protect a kid. And mm-hmm. I think that's what's messing him up. Yeah. Well, he's thinking about... So he's thinking about his kid. Yeah. And he's yeah. saying, I won't be strong enough without the moon. I need the moon's power to make me stronger. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a, like a one-page so, panel. So, question. Okay. If Wolfman turns back into human form, will he be Would able he to turn... need the moon to turn back? Like, maybe he doesn't want to because all he needs is a little moon and he can get out. But if he just turns back little, into human... Just a little, little moon. moon. But if he turns back into human form, maybe he will just pass out and then he's vulnerable. Or maybe he didn't want them to know who he is. No, everyone yeah, because, knows who Wolfman is. But think about it. Everyone yeah. knows The moon Wolfman doesn't is. heal him. Remember, it, they made... they made The moon heals him, yeah. It, or, or, I'm sorry, not the moon, did, but I when think, he reverts, that he that's heals. What it, that's what... The uh, yeah exactly when he reverts back he does mm-hmm. so it has to be that is what I'm saying but the moon doesn't just heal him just because it's the moon no no oh, no he has to revert you know what do you remember when the elder was teaching him not to revert back to human form remember he like punched through his stomach and he's like you can't yeah. always rely on that because if you yeah. revert back to human form you can you'll die because yeah, you'll yeah. pass out and you'll be vulnerable right yeah. so maybe oh, he's maybe he's utilizing yeah. his uh, teachings his elder brood skill interesting um knockout announces that she's getting married yep. Uh, to El Chupacabra. Oh, who she then she inter- she uh, uh, inter- de- 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 invites invites him, but doesn't she mention the fact that like, hey, it's there's gonna be drinking there. I, I just wanted you to know. Um, no, I think it was more of a hard thing because his divorce is final. Yeah, that's what it yeah. was. Okay, he also got the letter. The that same is- as she was telling him, he yeah. opened it up and was like, oh shit, All my right. divorce is final. And she's like, I'm S- sorry. So Best Tiger now put the bandana over his eyes. Mm-hmm. Because it's time for fighting. He, clair- he clairvoyant, and uh, Sling Mantis find a door mm-hmm. where whatever is blocking her power is coming from. Mm-hmm. And we get the crazy backstory to Red Eye. Yeah. So behind this door, they finally open it up. 
is this creature. This this like demon, other dimensional demon. That its its arm, its hands and feet are what look like stuck in portals in the stone. Yeah. And it's got like flames shooting out of its face, and it's just this it's crazy freaky. fucking alien like from like screaming. another dimension. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And clairvoyant. Oh well, before. Yeah, that so that's, happens, yeah, that's yeah. how that is, issue ends. Now right. on to issue nine. So chapter three um, of the second volume. Dobby opens up these, I guess, windows or something like that that can let a little bit of the... The moonlight in. The moonlight in. I like seeing uh, seeing Chloe, Chloe and, Zachariah. and Zachariah fighting. I thought that was really cool. Yep, so Wolfman is saying, you know, he, he don't, you know... Chloe, stop! I'm not worth it. You so know, Chloe's can't. still out there, right? Yeah, she's still alive. Like I want to know more. Mm-hmm. I want to know more of what 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 happened with Chloe. It makes me wonder why they went back to this because it's so obvious that this is over with. Yeah, you know what I mean. And Maybe he's just remembering a failure in his life. You yeah, know? I guess so. But Wolfman bursts out of the cage and catches Dobby, and is now out. And the guardsmen are like, "Oh, we're done. Mm-hmm. We're we're not we're not going to fight this guy." But clairvoyant goes into the mind of this demon thing and it's talking through her yeah and it's right. talking it like possesses her it's talking through her about how they're from another dimension that conquer worlds and where they could teleport mm-hmm. places right but he his work was um what's what I'm looking for insufficient no 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 like his his other colleagues didn't think they they sabotaged them yeah yeah so, so they stranded him on Earth. So they stranded him on Earth, like thousands of miles under the Earth surface for like thousands of years too. Mm-hmm. So he's this thing has been on Earth, phased into rock. Yeah. For all this time, and this guy, this guy, the construction who was, worker. Yeah, construction worker found him, and his essence went into him, mm-hmm. and that was Red Eye. Yeah. So the power that Red Eye uses is this monster's essence. And every single time Red Eye kills somebody, their soul gets absorbed into this monster. And it makes him stronger and stronger. And if he gets strong enough, he can break free. Okay. So what's happening is Red Eye is feeding this thing. Yeah. And Jeez. just making it stronger. Yeah, and making it stronger. And Best Tiger's like, well, all we... Off of, all off of a guy who can shoot lasers out of his eyes. Let's, let's make a story. Like, let's come up with something. Yeah. Like, that's that's pretty... That's impressive. Yeah. As opposed to... It's just a mutant ability. Yeah. Let's call him Cyclops. Easy. Yeah. Very cool. So, they... What? Rush in. They have... Well... Oh, yeah. Wasn't there a timer? Yeah. So, Best Tiger... This was kind of cool. Plants C4... And he, he sets it for 21 minutes. And he, doesn't he say, like, that's all I'll need? Like, yeah, he, that's... I just need 20 minutes. That's all he'll need to get to get out, to get everyone out. Um, and it shows him going through, and it's like there's the timer. 19 minutes, 11 minutes, 7 minutes, 3 minutes. And everyone's shooting at him, and he's just dodging bullets like it's nothing. Why is he so fucking cool? I know! I hate it! And all in black, too. Yeah. Um... Meanwhile, the whole. Meanwhile, I thought Batman too, man. I really did. Very Batman. Yep. Um, Meanwhile, there's like a governor, or something that's like in this riot. Oh yeah, yeah. That's outside the the prison. Mm -hmm. Um, Did she end up being under his payroll or something? Well, she is, yeah. But but he's gonna kill her. Yeah. Because he sold her out to the um, the guardians. Okay. That went in there. And right before, oh no, he kills her. So Red Eye kills the governor girl. Mm-hmm. Um, and right before he's going to shoot Wolfman again, his power fizzles out, and it's because the C four went off. Okay. And destroyed and it, that monster thing. Did it kill it or did it just rebury it? No, it killed it. Okay. Yeah. So he loses his power completely. Right. And then they what days the mob takes him. And rips them apart. Yeah. So the, and he, the uh, oh and Dobby he loses Dobby right Wolfman is searching for Dobby. In oh this, wait maybe he doesn't this, die. Who uh, Red Eye? No 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 the creature thing. I don't know either way it's it, the, the the it buries him and he loses his power whether right. it kills him or not I'm not sure. Right. But at one point this mob that's ripping Red Eye apart maybe 
is searching for Davi, and you see him for a split second, but he loses him in the mob. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing you see is Wolfman. He was almost trampled to death by mm -hmm. all those people, but they, they get him out. The Black Ops team gets him out. Yeah. And the last thing you That's see... That's right. So it, what, it, all it did was bury the, right, the, the, is, the monster again. Is the power then transferred to Davi. Yeah. So it's a little boy in an alleyway, and it's right. Davi, and his eyes start to glow. Right. Which is pretty, mm -hmm. pretty upsetting, but interesting. I mean, I think at this point, they knew the series was probably going to be ending because mm -hmm. they, they wrap it up somewhat. Um, it's still interesting that they left that loose thread though. Not that it's a big deal. We know invincible and it's one of those things that like, yeah, he just, he just has that power, whether he uses it or not. I mean, it's just a fun little, like, yeah, you know, it, end it, of a comic it thing. lives on kind of thing. Right. Oh, so chapter four yep. of volume two, which is issue nine. nine. And the cover is, uh, ten. The wedding. Six plus ten. nine. Ten, six ten. plus four. <laughs> the, the wedding of uh, knock Come on, out, you can do knock it. out and, and Kid <laughs> Thor. And oh, before you get to that, sorry. Before you get to that, uh, this is issue in Invincible. Issue eighty-eight of Invincible. Uh, the Guardians fly up into space to uh, intercept um, Mark and Thrag and Alan and Oliver and all that. Uh, there is Knockout, Monster Girl, uh, Japan Droid. We do see Le Bruiser, Le Bruiser um, Kaboomerang. and Kaboomerang and everything. And they do fight and all. So there is he, Le Bruiser, she is in um, Invincible. Uh, Invincible. I don't know if we see her after this, though. So, yeah, I just found that real quick. Hmm. Okay, so issue 10, this, the, the wedding. This was a very, to me very useless issue yeah i like the idea of them kind of playing at spider-man though yeah and this was another one of those ones where they, it was told in a fun way yeah wasn't it all it was, told it was through... told through this guy what's his name oh yeah barker barker because they call because uh what's his first name barry or something it's like barry barker or something mm -hmm. and uh the j jonah jameson is m martin you know. matheson yeah. yeah it's triple m and then uh uh the girl at the front desk is he says give your thing to someone is it i forgot her name but anyways there's a there's it's a play all on, play yeah, yeah it's, it's all a play, play on spider-man so that he works for a tab a superhero tabloid where he gets pictures and stuff and this barker guy was hired by kid thor and and, and not outrun it's <laughs> outrun. It's, it's not to be the it's outrun now. To, to the be, same person to be the photographer at their wedding. Yep. Now there's a lot of dialogue. Um, El Chupacabra is in costume, and actually, some of them are though. They're all in costume. Yeah. Um, El Chupacabra is in costume. the 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 main story from here is that he relapses. Yeah. And he drinks. Yep. We get to see Kid Thor's relatives, who are they're basically just. Um, Vikings. Yeah, they're as guardians or whatever. They want to fight Yeti. Yeah, because, because he's a frost giant. <laughs> he's a frost giant, and it's going to bring a, upon Ragnarok. They say, yeah. he's like, dude, they this frost that. giant is trying to Ragnarok your wedding. I thought, was, I thought that was fun. Yeah. Uh, what did you I guys... read this, uh, reread this the, the day that I really watched Thor Ragnarok. That's funny. Um, I liked, uh, so we got um, El Chupacabra feeling the pressure of wanting to drink and calling his sponsor um, his his is it just called a sponsor mm -hmm. sponsor yeah, yeah. It's a sponsor um francesco why don't we ever call him francisco yeah because el chupacabra is cool chupacabra. Chupacabra. uh by the way the the priest marrying uh kid thor and knockout is also a member of capes uh his name is holy water he is water and he's also a priest like he's living water and his name is holy water mm. i just thought that was cool okay just another capes thing um so yeah more shenanigans at the wedding there's a lot of drama at the wedding everyone's fighting mm -hmm. um it's very stressful it's not what knockout wants obviously yep uh uh a uh, chupacabra sponsor goes to the spot where he's going to meet him uh there's a note that says sorry um because he relapsed Drank, yeah um mrs popper comes in takes knockout and kid thor to vegas to just elope yep and she's like i figured your best wedding gift would be to get out of your to wedding get you out of there and so they go elope in vegas um el chupacabra we find out that his sponsor is none other fucking titan 
than uh, Titan. Yeah. And they didn't know each other. No, like, they didn't know they, they didn't, were each well, other. Well, they sponsor. knew each other, but they didn't know that he was Titan and he was El Chupacabra. Mm-hmm. And Titan was... is like very supportive. Oh yeah, like I because, love that. Yeah, like well, they this issue ends with them fighting. This, my favorite part about this issue, go back, was oh that's how it ends. Yeah. So oh, yeah, yeah, it just no, ends yeah. with them fit. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. And then the, the issue ends with another tease that the Lizard League is building an army. I fucking hate the Lizard League. All right, and then them. uh yep, and then chapter uh, eleven, so issue eleven. We get more of the Lizard League, it's, you know, their armies. Crawling very weird, like. Creepy. Just like slithering. Like slithering. But they're like human bodies. Yeah. Um, so El Chupacabra wakes up in a cell in his costume, and he and Titan start to fight. And Titan tells him that, like, I put you in your costume. For a reason. Yeah. Because, okay. like, it, you realize that it wasn't. It wasn't. You've never Francisco. relapsed when it was Francisco. It was. It wasn't Francisco that relapsed. It, it was, was El Chupacabra. Chupacabra. Yeah. Um, more Lizard League stuff. We find out that they're turning. Um, dinosaurs. Yeah, they're using dinosaurs as lair, and they're turning people into lizards. Um, the Guardians find out about this. They all show up to fight them, and there's this big fight between all the lizards and um, the Guardians of the Globe. At one point, um, the Lizard League captures... Some of them. All right? of them. Or half of them. They capture half of them. Uh, Invincible and Immortal show up. I love I love how like Cecil's yeah, like... Brits, no, Brits like, like a, son of a bitch, calling the big guns. We need help because they're getting overwhelmed. Yeah. Invincible and Cover your Immortal ears. do like a huge punch on the ground. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very uh, superhero entrance. So at one point, and we even see um, Bulletproof and... Um, um, Samson. Black Samson go behind like a, a wall and everything like that. But the issue ends with... Oh, my God. I hated this. <laughs> with some of them being turned into lizards. So, Bullproof turns into a crocodile person. Um, Kaboomerang turns into, like, a, a chameleon. chameleon. Uh, that's Outrun. Out. She turns into a cobra thing. Mm-hmm. Um, Labruzer turns into, like, a, like a bearded dragon lizard. Yeah, kind of like a Komodo dragon. Uh, no, Samson turns into, like, a Komodo. Oh, you're right, yeah. Fucking Knockout turns into a turtle. Mm-hmm. And then... Best tiger. Best tiger turns into like an iguana. I think type that's thing. an iguana, right? It yeah, it's a thing an iguana. Around his thing with around his neck. Yeah. Yep. All, All right. very like. Oh. That was it's, it's it's one of those things that it's like yeah it's the lizard league like it's weird. Yeah. I mean it, it was kinda it kind of you know what it kind of looked like it all kind of reminded me of like old school Ninja Turtles for some reason like yeah, it just kinda. looked. I feel like that's not the bad part, yet. What? But the, you know what? You know what? The bad that part is, is really coming. That's really corny and it's weird and all that stuff. But the thing I like most about that is... It's probably is, the thing that I like the least. Really? I bet. Issue six, the final issue. This is how Invincible Universe ends with this fight scene. It starts off and King Cobra is like, all right, now, you know, fight for me. And they're like, uh, no. Just because you turned us into... Made us look like lizards... All you did was change our skin. You didn't change our mind. I, I didn't like that. I liked that. No, I thought that I was didn't. funny. I, I, didn't I like thought that it made sense, too. I don't think it made sense. Like, there's no way that the the head of the Lizard League is that stupid. Like, I felt like they were... He can't be that dumb. How did you not see that? I know that that's the joke, is that he didn't see it, but, like, eh. Yeah. I didn't really like it. I didn't mind that. It was all right. But then again, all the other, you know, guards and everything like that. Ironically they... enough, I was more invested in what was happening to El Chupacabra yeah. and Titan. So El than... Chupacabra and Titan continue their fight. Uh, oh my god, this is great. Go for it. So Titan explains to him that you didn't relapse when you were Francisco. You you relapsed while you were in El costume. Chupacabra. And he takes them to a meeting where there's Ele- Elef... Or... The elephant? Yeah, the elephant is there. Fucking Octoboss Octo is there. One of the girls from the Actioneers. Um, the Actioneers. Who is that? That's Clairvoyant. Clairvoyant? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Clairvoyant and some it, other it's devil a demon, guy. It's a devil guy that's from uh, Capes. And he said, I mean, they're all heroes and villains in the same room. Octoboss yep. is sitting there, but because they're, they're alcoholics, they're there to support each other. Mm-hmm. Well, it's an addiction uh, right. room. I have a feeling like... I don't think it's just Octoboss alcoholism. Octoboss is addicted to... Something. Because... Eating babies. Uh, Clairvoyant, I think, is addicted to something else. That it could be in, anything. That's in capes. Is she so, addicted to sex? Yeah. I knew it. Yeah. I knew it. So, 
then yeah we go back to and that's the last time we see them right uh, yeah it's el chupacabra he says my name is el chupacabra and i'm well an he says he says my my name is francisco and he's like no he's yeah. like my name is el chupacabra and i'm an alcoholic mm -hmm. he had a huge storyline all throughout guarding the globe volume one I all the way to this didn't like him in guarding the globe yeah well, i thought that he was kind of a useless character but his story paid off so well in yeah, this. i thought that was cool yeah so yeah and then the guardians end up saving uh saving well, uh the, well they end up beating the shit out of king cobra kid thor does yeah after he sees what he does to knockout he literally like his ribs are showing out of his fucking skin like he just beat him to death with the I, hammer and i'm pretty sure this is the last we see of the lizard league and all of invincible really yeah because think after issue 100 when would it when would no we see this is this is before didn't um isn't this before Rex gets shot in the head and loses his this hand? This is way after oh, that. I think issue really? 100? This, yeah. Rex died in issue 60. Six, okay, well then who is this? Because didn't this guy get his head blown off by Rex? Yes. Okay, so how, how is he there? I don't know. That's a good point. But that's this is way a, a after lot of them, Rex blown. I think some of them died. Oh yeah, it definitely is. I think she might have died too. Because I think like everybody in that room died. Except for oh he was he was recruiting new ones yeah so maybe that's what he was because so, it it shows him recruit him and turn him into something and yeah, then also but, but that guy's not in here we don't see him recruit this guy that's yeah we this, do you think so yeah he's he's in I didn't think so he's like but his name's hanger. uh his name's Komodo Dragon right yeah right and I didn't think we did but um no you do at the end. oh right here right here right here it's actually at the end of uh, the Wolfman arc with Red Eye. Really? It's the last page where you see him, like, he finds some serial killer. Oh, shit, you're right. Yeah. I'm sorry. You're right. So he does find a new Komodo. Komodo. You're right. I'm sorry. Wow. I thought that they did mess that up, but you're you're absolutely right. You're right about finding the mess up in the... No, so that is yeah. a different guy. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, all right, and then uh, Rexplode... Reverse engineers the machine to in order to. Um... Well, no. So then they discover that it's not the lizard league didn't or just want to turn everyone into lizards. They wanted to turn on a device that dinosaurus created that to it was gonna increase the Earth's temperature. Yeah. So only the cold blooded. So lizards. only the cold blooded will survive. Right. So they end up going to set off that device, but um, what the, was it? There's two different locations, or three, different, three locations. different locations. There's three different locations, and the device wouldn't just increase the temperature. It would actually erupt all of the super volcanoes on the Earth. And In order like an to atom bomb. increase the temperature. Right. Yeah. And, and Britt says, you know, I've always wondered what it would be like to have an atom bomb go off in my face, wondering what it, what it would be like. And then it cuts to robot lowering him yeah. into the... Uh, and he was like, I was just kidding. Yeah. So Mark, Invincible, goes to one. Uh, Immortal goes to the other. They so, end up destroying theirs, so right? Maybe I'm dumb or maybe I'm just really smart. But I assumed, I just assumed that the reason why Robot was lowering Brit down in there is because Brit is invincible, obviously. Like, he's more or less invincible. Mm -hmm. uh, why would Robot be going down there with him? I naturally thought that... that Rudy or Rex was not in the suit. No. Turns out he was in the suit. No, no he it, wasn't. It melts right here. Oh, yeah. okay. And well, then he, he was like, he, he, why was he saying like, a, I need help or something? He said a little help over here. Oh, I don't know. He tried, like he, at one point he even says like, I'll get you down as far as I can go. But at one point I won't be able to survive. Like the, yeah. it'll, it'll break down. Well, most importantly, Cecil even admits that they're not going to defeat. They're not going to destroy these bombs in time. Well, Mark and Immortal, Immortal are way too far away. Get theirs destroyed, but they can't get to Brit in time. Right, and Brit's not powerful enough. So then, Bulletproof is just or not Bulletproof. Oh I yeah, I that. forgot about this. Um, Best Tiger is just in the background with his arms crossed. Everyone else is panicking, trying to escape, and he's just like Kaboomerang. And he's like Kaboomerang can do it. And he says, "I've studied you. It's not your your boomerangs or your throwing. He's like you're a telepath." Yeah, which he's is like, we got a we got a peak of that in mm -hmm. Guarding the Globe. Yeah. So, Best Tiger puts his bandana around Kaboomerang's eyes his, and says, you don't use your eyes. Meanwhile, they're all still lizards. Yeah, they're all still lizards, out. which is ridiculous. I wish they would have all turned before this. I know. I, I just really didn't like this at all. But, um, Best Tiger, 
or er, Kaboomerang is saying that he he's like you know he's focusing and he can kind of see the machines but he can't make out what's a bomb. And, and then, he's, well, he's saying there's too much noise around me in this room. There's right. too much machinery. Like it's all like yeah. He says I can't isolate the bomb. And then and then, Bestseller says then stop all the machines. And then he says all. And then he says all. And he just destroys. Which this is such a cool scene of Kaboomerang falling to his knees and like destroying all the machinery. Mm-hmm. It would have been so much cooler, I think, if he didn't look like a uh, fucking a, a chameleon. chameleon. Yeah. But especially with the scene with Best Tiger talking to him, Best Tiger looks like that, you know? Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. But it works. It destroys the, the, the machines. And then this is the scene in which Robot turns everybody back into, mm-hmm. you know, humans. Uh, yeah. And uh, we got what? Oh, El Chupacabra has his his twenty four hours twenty four hour sober pin pinned to his costume. And Invincible Universe, I think, ends on a such a corny ending. I hated this ending. Yeah, it's the typical like, oh, hey, did you do how anything was your day? Yeah. And then he's like, uh, you know, it was normal. anything interesting happening. No, and then he's really. just thinking about all the crazy war that he just went through, and then yeah, and then it ends. It definitely was not as like. Um, I want to say epic as set destroying all of Paris. Oh yeah. You know, like that was fucking it, it crazy. Didn't, it didn't have the scope of the first of guarding the globe, but it was more intimate. We yes. had, we had relationships. We and had I was okay with that. character development. We had all that kind of stuff. So it is interesting how different the two series actually are. Mm-hmm. And you know, with between the positives and negatives between them. Yeah. Uh, Bill, if uh, other than best tiger, because obviously we, we'd want to see more best tiger. If, we could see more of any of these characters. Who would you guys want to see? Other than Best Tiger? Other, yeah, because that's the obvious answer. If there's going to be more, like, what's a character of the Guardians of the Globe, one of the new ones, that you wanted to see more of or wish we could have seen more of? Hmm, I would say probably, and this is going to come as a surprise, El Chupacabra. Because he had the most interesting story. He doesn't have any powers, which is interesting in... The Invincible Universe, mm-hmm. because everybody else does, is like super, super powered. Yeah. But out of everybody in that that series, the, especially the last two volumes, I was mostly intrigued by him. Mm-hmm. What do you think, TJ? I would say, I mean, uh, as this goes outside of the Invincible Universe that we just recapped. You're asking about all of the Guardians of the Globe in general. Yeah. I would say Yeti. Because I oh, would, cool. I want to see him like grow to be You're a right. teenager and be Wait. smart. His and he barely had a line in all of Invincible. He where, had. He where had was a, he at the end? He, oh yeah, where, with the Lizard League? Was he, he was he fighting the Lizard League? I don't think he was there. Oh no, Best Tiger killed him. No. Yeah, I know. Was he even fighting them? He wasn't there. Where was he? He's not there. At all. And they don't even make mention. And he's not even at the end. Like in the room with Robot and all that. Yeah. Yeah, Yeti's not there. Was there something that happened? Is Yeti in Volume 2? <laughs> <laughs> he's definitely in Volume 2. Okay, he's at the wedding. Yeah. So, he, yeah, he was at the wedding. I just don't think that he ever... After the wedding, it. after the it. wedding, he just doesn't... He's just not there. I'll have to I mean, look he through fights, again. He fights the uh, the brothers. Yeah. Kid, Kid Thor's brother. Yeah. Yeah, but that's it. Yeah. I'm going to have to uh, look back and see if they mention, oh, yeah, Yeti's off doing something, something. Because he's not there. Interesting. So, but yeah. I think it would be cool that's... to see him, how he would react as a teenager or how he would react as an adult and actually be smart. And if he was an adult, he'd be a fucking giant. Well, yeah. He... I think that'd be cool to see. So, we're all, like, that is, he is going to grow up into one of those gigantic fucking monsters, right? Did they say that right? he was going to? Or did yeah. they say that he was a, a runt, runt or something? They said he is a runt, or yeah. he's small for his age. He's only eight years old. They yeah. said 12, he would eventually... years old. They even said that he would grow to be... Yeah. Yeah, see, that that's pretty cool. I wonder they how long, it, I wonder how long it, it takes, though, you know? Yeah. But that's interesting. Because we do see him five years later, and he's somewhat normal size um, after Mark comes back in the final issue, or during the robot war. Um... I think Yeti's a good answer. I would like to see more of him. I feel like we saw enough El Chupacabra for my, in my opinion. I kind of want to see if we could have seen more more Kaboomerang because I feel like he didn't get... I hate Kaboomerang. I, because I feel I like him. he didn't get what no, everyone else him. did. Lebruza got his own episode, like, uh, own issue. Everybody got because their own Lebruza, issue. Because Lebruza is more interesting Lebruze. than fucking 
Kaboomerang. I just don't know why. Like, they, and I want... Be, this is why I want one. Because I agree with you. I want there to be a reason to like you want him. Okay, you want yeah. them to try and prove you wrong. Yes. Right? Like, convince uh, me that yes. he's... A, and I also yeah. would be interested to see... Because he's kind of tied with OutRun now. And I'd like to see more of her. They're both kind of like... There wasn't enough. Like, everybody else I feel like I was satisfied with. I wasn't satisfied with their story. So that's why I'd want more for them. Hmm. Not because I like them so much, but because I want to like them more. That makes sense. Yeah. But my my pick is Best Tiger. Yeah, of course. That would be awesome. Um, so that does it for Invincible Universe. That's a, that's a big chunk. That's four volumes of what I think is the most direct invincible tie-in uh did you guys like it yeah overall yeah yeah again i i mean i've said it before i i've said it again and then i'll say it again now but i think that it's absolutely something that if you want more invincible and you're sad that it's over with read this yeah like because it brings you back to certain events that happen in the invincible universe and then it's just more characters that you've seen before Mm -hmm. and just for best tiger alone obviously if you've listened to this entire episode Uh, you've already read it that you've already read it um, but I think that's, that it's absolutely important to yep. the Invincible Universe. I agree. Uh, next episode, we're going to be back in two weeks. I think we're going to be doing, uh, returning to one of our, uh, episode types that we haven't touched on in a while. I think we've only done two of them. We've ever. done two. Yeah. The first one was called In Memoriam. I got to rechange. I got to change the name of that was again. Was it our third episode? That was our third episode, I think. Yeah. Cause it was nice. first episode, the movie episode, then a Rex episode. So anyways, we've talked about Rex Blode angstrom levy and then uh next episode uh we're gonna be doing another character discussion i'm gonna probably put a poll up on twitter we'll give you guys the option whatever gets the most votes that'll be the one that we talk about and go into in depth on uh other than that um you guys can email us at the invincible podcast at gmail.com find us on twitter find us on facebook um i should have said this at the beginning of the episode and i forgot but if you're listening to this today the day it comes out if you're listening to this at all the new episode of the Oblivion Song podcast is out, uh, so go listen to that. Um, but real quick, what did you guys think of uh, A Quiet Place? TJ, you go first. Uh, I walked out of it thinking it, w- it was very enjoyable. Mm-hmm. It was like it's got like a ninety-seven on Rotten Tomatoes. Don't go into it with a ninety-seven percent thinking it's going to be the best horror movie you've ever seen. First of all, it's not a horror movie. Yeah. I don't think it was scary at all. I don't think it was supposed to be scary. Mm-hmm. Suspenseful. It's very stressful so i well, i compared it before, to uh gravity do you remember walking out of gravity and feeling like you like forgot to breathe a hundred yes, times yeah. it's just like that it's so stressful but i will say that since i saw it thinking about it more i like it even more and more than i think about it okay i'm not one for horror movies not one for three like these kind of you could handle it easy okay i've seen it compared to signs no not even no close. signs was scary okay good no, because I don't like fucking science. No, no this is un- this is not like science at all. Cool. This is because I want to see this. It mm-hmm. looks good. It's yeah. just very tense. Like I remember, I wait. I, is it tense like Cloverfield Ten? You know what I mean, or whatever Ten Cloverfield Lane, where it just has like really creepy, intense moments, or is it actually even more? It's it's well, tense. Like sh- sh- shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. It's yeah. coming. It's coming. Like like yeah. Like you're like constantly like oh is it there? Yeah. Like, oh. oh god. Yeah. It's it's terrible. It's you know what but it's awesome. You know what it's so like. You guys liked it. So you liked it. There were yeah. parts there like if if I'm upstairs and it's eleven o'clock at night and I I'm like in my bathroom and I accidentally bump like a shampoo bottle and it falls in the tub uh-huh. and it's like yeah. and I'm like and I'm like waiting for one of the kids to make a noise. It yeah. was like that, but times but, a thousand. But, but for two hours. Yeah, because like <laughs> they'll make a loud noise and you're like and you're like waiting for like. Oh God! Did they hear it? And then it's it, it, it. For me, don't go in there thinking that it's again what TJ said. Okay. It's not it. Okay. It was a movie that got hype and it absolutely is in, it is fucking deserved the hype. Like that's a fucking movie that's like mm. holy shit, hundred percent. This uh, is good. I think it. I do think it kind of deserves the hype. Like like everybody on Twitter is freaking out. Like all like I'm seeing tons I, of celebrities seen a lot, reach yeah. out saying. Did you know that they loved it? Did you know that the I the, think that like I t- would. T- definitely t- put on there. TJ, t- t- what do you t- want? Did you know that the daughter was actually deaf? Hmm. I think the, he wanted, John Krasinski wanted an all deaf. The deaf character in that movie? Other than him, I think, or something like that. Is actually deaf hmm. in real life. Hmm. And it's crazy. Some of the, the sign language conversations 
are very emotional. Yeah. And she emotes like a lot of fucking. Mo- There's a part where she's cool. arguing with her dad, cool. and she's uh, and she's uh, like, right, 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 right. Right. I'm not gonna spoil. Bill it. is the worst at spoiling movies. Like the worst. He will be like, I'm not gonna spoil anything, and then he will straight up spoil it. That's for right. I'll you. see every it, time because he gets too excited and then just says it. Fuck you, TJ. Every time. Every fucking time. I'll smack you right in your bitch face. It's about to get real up in this bitch. We're gonna have to go. Because I'm going to have to smack his bitch face. And I don't want to embarrass him on the air. Alright. Bye, everybody. Thanks right, for listening. Bye. bye. Sounded like wow, 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 just, just wow, 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 wow.